UFC Vegas Fight Club TV. I am Kyle Anthony, your host. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the prediction show for UFC on ESPN plus two, a Sun Sal vs. Marias. We're going to get into our best bet play, our free play, maybe talk about a couple other plays if we can, if we've got some time, and our overall feeling on this card. It's another ESPN card. Really excited about it. It's also... February 2nd, which is my 40th birthday. Have a little drink here again. Had some drinks for those of you that did watch the bet review show for the last event. You did see I uh, had a couple of metal lights, so I decided to change it up a little bit. Keep that party going because come tomorrow into Sunday, and basically I think the party should end about Monday. Um, So basically tomorrow I will be heading to the casinos, Friday, Saturday with a bunch of people. Looking to have about 16 to 18 people that will be out there having a great time with me to celebrate my 40th. And uh, then I come back and then there's a Super Bowl party down the street. Have my neighbors that are going to be having a little bit of a party there as well. So hopefully I can make it. Hopefully I'm uh, all together. We'll see how that goes. We will talk some UFC today. Before we do all that, we got to have the shot. we got to have a fireball. I think it's only right if uh, we start this uh, 40th celebration off right. So, uh, congratulations to me making it this far into life. 40 years old. Oh, that stuff's good. So, um, the other thing I want to touch on before we get into the uh, free play is also I wanted to uh, uh, say I did not change the name of this show yet. I'm going to change it. Like I said, Kyle Anthony will be... In the title somewhere, we will figure all that stuff out. Like I said, get a little more professional here, and, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. So hopefully by the next one, I've just been busy, enjoying myself a little bit too much right now. And, uh, again, I got a lot of things going on for the 40th uh, birthday bash that we will be having. So um, we will uh, talk a little bit more about that in the coming weeks when I will hopefully, working on right now the new logo, working on a couple of different things. So stick around for that. And also, I want to, again, thank everybody who have continued to support this channel on Wager Talk as well as in the comment section. Everybody's feedback has been awesome. Uh, really enjoy those conversations. Looking forward to these conversations as well as we move into this event. And those of you that are letting me know the bets you have, the bets you won, the bets that you're looking to place, even some just leans and some conversations that you guys are having. Always great to hear all of that. That's what the comment section is for. I continue the conversation down below. So again, much respect to everybody that continues to push forward and smash that like button as well. Head kick the bell icon and uh, get involved with Fight Club TV. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the free play. Now the free play here to me, this this card was very limited to me. Um, you know, I know I've already talked to a couple of you guys on Twitter. You can follow me at Mr. UFC Vegas. And uh, I'm talking to a couple of you guys on Twitter and a couple of the fights you guys really like, some of you guys didn't really like. I mean, there was even the uh, Johnny Walker versus Justin Ledet. And for me, real quickly getting at that one, you know, it's, you know, that fight to me, I was looking at it and I kind of was leaning towards Ledet when I first looked at this. And the odds were there, you're getting some nice plus odds. I think it was around, I think plus 150, somewhere around there, that you're getting on Ledet. Ledet, not bad, not bad, but. The, the where you're what you're paying for Johnny Walker didn't really I don't like the the minus 190 on him I think he can get the job done as well very big of a toss up in my opinion for these guys that I think they're just going to be looking for throw throw uh, throw some bombs I kind of stayed away from that one I think that Walker does get the job done but I don't like the price on him at minus 190 the other one was um uh, even Aldo. I mean, I think Aldo has a shot. I, I, I think a lot of people like Mercado. I think that there's good reason that you like him. But if you take a look even in that, you know what you've got, you know, Mercado has beaten Justin Stevens, uh, Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens lost to Ortega. He beat uh, uh, Catter, and then he um, uh, beat uh, Cub Swanson. Uh, I, I'm not that impressed with that. You know, I think he's a good up-and-comer, but I was not that impressed with all, the, I think, he, again, I think he has, he can move forward a little bit better, but I think this is a big step up for him. I know a lot of people really sleep on an Aldo here, but getting Aldo at plus 110, I actually like that. I have very small exposure on him right now. I did not place a big bet on him. I do have money on him at plus 110 or plus 108, I think is, is actually what it was. Um, I think that's good. I think that's not bad price, and I think people really sleep on him. I think he comes out here, he gets smart, and I think he goes out there and gets a decision victory. So I do like him in that fight there. But again, for a best bet, for a free play, 
I wasn't big on some of those really diving into them. So the one that I'm looking at is the main event of the evening for the free play. It is on uh, a Sun Sal vs. Marias. And this fight here, again, I, it was kind of the same way that I took a look at this fight. When I'm breaking it down and, and really starting to look at some of their past fights, and we'll talk about it briefly, some of the things I liked about these guys, and some of the things I, I didn't like about these guys, and where I start to head when I start looking at the over-under. So when you take a look at this here, you've got a Sun Sao, uh, he's 27 and 5, right now his odds are plus 152, and then you've got Marais who is 21 and 5, and he's minus 177. Now when these odds first came out, uh, a Sun Sao was around plus 200, plus 210, and I ended up placing a small wager on him, I got a, a, a little bit of exposure on a Sun Sao straight. Now I thought the odds were just way too high, and... I just didn't think that that was where the odds should really be. I thought it was way too separated for where it should be. Now, actually, where it is now is kind of what I thought the opening line would be. Maybe, you know, minus 160 to, uh, to plus 150. Somewhere in there, I think, is where the odds should be. So when it came out at plus 210, I had to get some money on it. I had to get some exposure on it just because the value was there. Now that it's changed a little bit, I think it's kind of where it should be. And this is a tight fight. I think this is an absolutely tight fight. So you take a look at here, and in the last 13 fights, uh, a Sun Tzu is 12 and 1. I mean, that's very impressive. And then on the other side, you've got Marias. Out of his last 17 fights, he's lost one, and that was to a Sun Tzu. Now, he's 3 and 1 within the UFC. He has been in the World Series of Fighting. He was the champion there. Did some great things there. And the hype came when he came over to UFC. They put him right into the fire, uh, into uh, Marias. I mean, they put him right into the fire going up against a Sun Tzu. That just shows the ability of what they really believe this kid's capable of. They really believe that he has got a lot of ability and for them to just not kind of work slowly work your way in and to put him right to a sun south that's that's a big statement and in that fight is that there was that was their first fight and that fight that was a very close fight i mean there was no doubt they were both you know a sun south came out it was very close in that first round he landed a big shot at the end of that first round uh, stunned him rocked him a little bit but it was it was really a back and forth battle very close i actually had it for marias 2-1 but it was so, I mean, I didn't even feel good about even making that call when I'm watching. I'm saying I, I would go 2-1, but I could see why you'd go 2-1 the other way for a Sun Sal. I think it was a very, very close fight. But there wasn't, to me, I, I think they both held back. I think it was something where they both really held back. I think it wasn't a fight where you take a look and you say they really both went for it. They were landing and they were throwing and it was a great fight. But I think that no one really went up there and took risks. And in this fight here, I think there's opportunity for them both to do that, for them both to actually really step it up, maybe more comfortable with each other. And I think that's when I start looking at the over-under here, when I start really breaking this fight down. Now, when you take a look, it was a Sun Sal was uh, his first, was Mariah's first fight within the UFC. He went in there, close fight, lost the, um, uh, the, uh, the decision, and then he fought uh, John Dotson. Now, John Dotson fight, John Dotson is sneaky good. I mean, he's quick, he actually has power, he is as goofy as they come, but he has got power, he's got speed, he's got ability, he's well-rounded, very underrated fighter, and in that fight there, he did win a split decision against Dotson, tough fight, but that even shows, again, I mean, you look at the four guys that Marias has fought, he really fought some great fighters, good fighters, quickly within the UFC. Again, I think that says a lot about his skill set. And then he went up against the next two were highlight reel knockouts. Aljamain Sterling, he knocked him out with a knee to the head, completely obliterated him, put him down in the first round, first minute, ended that fight. That really started to put him on the map, I believe, that that was who is this guy? Because Aljamain was the next guy, too. They were looking at Aljamain and saying, you know what? Aljamain's got a lot of ability, and he actually is at this point where he is starting to pull up some victories. He's starting to really piece it together. So that was a big victory for Marias. And then you take a look at the next one was Jimmy Rivera. Now, I did have Jimmy Rivera as a play. I did like him in that fight. And the fight didn't even go, it was 33 seconds, Rivera got knocked out cold with a head kick, and it shows just the skill set, and how good actually Marias, and, and really what his ceiling is. That he is, he's really actually a fantastic fighter when you come to how quick his kicks are, he does great cage movement, I love the way that he really switches stance, he goes from orthodox to southpaw very smoothly, and he consistently moves around the cage, I think that's says a lot about a guy that, again, fought at 
lower level, but right away they're putting him here. And I think that just guys that are taking a look at him, he's a tough puzzle to really figure out. He is a kickboxer. He wants to stand and bang. But then you take a look at a Sun Cell who is a little bit more well-rounded. And I think he comes in here with a different strategy. Now you take a look at his last few fights. You got his last four fights. Um, he did beat Aljamain Sterling in a split decision uh, um, win. He fought um, Marlon Marias. We just went over that. And then he ended up getting that victory. Matthew Lopez, he fought. Um, Lopez is, this was almost like a, like a gimme fight. I, I'm not really sure where Lopez fits in the mix of all these fighters that that, um, that a Sun Cell has fought. He goes out there, he knocks out Lopez in the third round, and then you've got Rob Font fight was the last one for a Sun Cell. And that fight to me, that showed a lot. Now, Font, I, he, Font was a best bet play a couple fights ago. He did get that victory, and I, I'm a big fan of Font. I think Font has great boxing, he's quick, he's rangy, he stands outside, he likes to bang, but he's a smart boxer, and he has, overall, I think he consistently gets better every fight. And in this fight here, it was an easy victory for Asenzo because he went in, got the takedowns. He really did, he had a great game plan in this fight. Now, when I take a look at all of those things, and with all those things being said, I start to look at, I do like a Sun Tzu. I think there's ability there for him to go in there, maybe smother him. But I really believe in a five-round fight that's going to be in Brazil, with both of these guys being Brazilian, I think they go in there, and with the price tag on the under at plus 165, I like the under here. As the, as the free play. I like the under as the free play. I, I really believe that they're going to go in there. They're going to be very comfortable with each other. I don't think that they're going to be uh, looking to stand outside and work. And It's a five-round fight, and I think that both of these guys with in Brazil, in front of friends, in front of family, with the pressure that they're going to realize, we got to go out there, we're going to step forward. And I think that if you take a look at the way that these guys fight, Marais has the ability to knock a guy out at any moment. There's no doubt he's got the ability. And at points, I think he's kind of been, he's kind of held back a little bit. And the last few fights, he's gone out there and said, I'm going to let loose because I have that ability. And I think even a sunset, you've seen a sunset in certain spots where he actually is starting to engage a little bit more. He definitely is, he is not without a doubt. You've seen, you've seen, he's not a finisher. There's no doubt he's not a finisher. Hold on. Let's get another one of these while we're, uh, while we're talking. It's only right, right? It's only right. 40th. But you take a look at, at um, Asunzo. He, he consistently goes to decisions. But there's been a lot of talk, even over the interviews that I've been watching, even over some of the things that I've been reading, that the pressure is on him a little bit to, to go out there and, and kind of put himself out there. And of course, it's not his game plan. He's not going to go out there and, and just have a complete firefight with Marais. But I believe in a five round fight with the biggest reason for me that I like the under the, a lot at, uh, and actually the under is four and a half rounds. Um, I did not say that. Uh, the under is four and a half rounds. So four and a half rounds, you're basically getting plus 165 on a no decision. So I really believe in a fight like this where both of these guys are lobbying for a title fight. They both know that they're, the title fight's there. Now, Dillashaw and Cejudo, there's opportunity there now, and there's some talk where they're going to have another fight, and it's going to be at Bantamweight. Is that possible? I think it's possible. I think that's definitely, without a doubt, something that could happen. Dana White has already talked a little bit about it, saying that he's interested in setting that up at the Bantamweight uh, in the bantamweight division to have that title on the line. But either way you look at it, both of these guys, whoever wins here, deserves a title shot. But the part of it that I think really tweaks it a little bit is if one of these guys goes out there and gets a uh, and gets a brilliant knockout, gets a brutal knockout, gets the victory, first, second round, whatever it may be, I think that that pushes them forward. Now, if Bryce goes out there and gets a knockout victory in the first or second or third or fourth, whatever it may be. If he goes out there and gets a knockout victory, I think he gets a title shot. I think he gets a title shot. After knocking out uh, Sterling, after knocking out um, uh, Jimmy Rivera, both of these guys in the first minute of the first round, if he goes out there and knocks out a Sun Sal, 
three really good fighters and knocks them out in spectacular fashion, I think that that's where Dana White is going to absolutely say, you get the title shot. This is the fight that people want to see. TJ Dillashaw is a world beater, although he did lose to Cejudo, and we did like Cejudo, we did place money on Cejudo, but TJ Dillashaw can get the job done. He can go out there, he is one of the best fighters that have ever been in the bantamweight division. So now you've got a guy who's young, well, new to the, new to the UFC coming up. I think that is an amazing fight for these two guys to go there. So I think it's on the back of his mind, but I think it's also on the back of the mind of the Sunset as well, knowing that I can't go on there and just lay and pray and hope that I get the victory. So I like the under four and a half rounds at plus 165 as my free play. I think it's going to be very much of a firefight. I think that first round may not be, but I think these guys going in there, they're both very active. They both have nice volume. And even in the last fight there, there were some, there were some spots there that they looked a little tired. A Sun Sal got a little tired because they do have big volume, but being five rounds in Brazil in front of friends, family, and a, and a title uh, opportunity looming, I think for that, those reasons, I think really shows that four and a half rounds is actually pretty high. I think this should probably be around three and a half. I think that's, which is an enormous difference. I think that's where this should be because it could, this fight could without a doubt end at any point. So that is my free play for UFC on ESPN plus two. And um, that is going to be it. I wanted to make this one quick because again, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I'm actually going to be getting out of here tomorrow morning, heading to the casino. So I got a lot to, a lot to do here. And, uh, you know, we will all be talking. Definitely follow me on Twitter if you have not done so, at Mr. UFC Vegas. We're going to do another shot for uh, the 40th birthday. And, uh, you know, and again, we're, I'm going to change the name. I know we've been talking about it. I'm going to change the name. So cheers to everybody and uh, enjoy the fights. We're going to have some more great conversation down in the comment section below. Get involved. I will have the bet review show out probably on Monday. Um, I, again, when I come back from my 40th, the uh, Super Bowl will be going on. Uh, I'm not going on, but it will be on that Sunday, so I'm not going to be able to film anything. So probably Monday, I will have the bet review show out. And uh, good luck on your bets. Let me know what you guys are betting. And probably for the last time, this is Mr. UFC Vegas, Fight Club TV.